Spear Point Ranch, March 2023. Ryan Cheney ELR on the rifle, 416 stroker. This is a cold bore record attempt. Everybody at the beginning of the match basically gets uh, gets a chance to set a new world record for you got to go three in a row, three by three plate. This time it's a 26 16. Uh, Derek Love currently owns the record at 25 85. Uh, I don't believe anybody even hit the first shot um, of this match. So they basically turned it into the first target where everybody shoots five shots at it, but if you hit the first three, then you claim the new Cold War record. Um, on this one, I was at 25 and a half mils of elevation, and I had calculated 3.4 mils of wind, um, but I was, I was low and left. Um, I had just got my PDM, and that was basically my first shots at distance uh, with the PDM. So um, I'm basically gathering data right now, trying to figure out exactly where it's going so I can true the Kestrel and get everything to line up. Um, I'm, I am seeing my misses. That one was pretty close. Um, it was like kind of down at the lower uh, left leg. I wish you guys could see what I'm seeing, but I cannot get a scope camera that'll handle the recoil of this rifle. Um, it really is not a lot of recoil. There's just a, a magnificent amount of energy that comes off the gun, and um, it just don't seem to handle the power. So uh, there's the fourth shot. Here's the fifth shot. I actually impacted this one. And, uh, of course, I'm shooting solo this season. Solo is very difficult not having a spotter because I have to take the shot, get back on the scope, get my eyes focused and everything, and see where that goes. The flight time on that is 4.7 seconds. So we actually started off at a further distance than what we have on target two. So now I am dialing back down because I'm going to 2,061 yards. So I'm going from 25 and a half mils down to 13.6. But I also want to reverse calculate the wind here. Um, I'm actually about to make a 19 degree shift across the field. Uh, you'll see my transition here in a second. And um, so I'm actually trying to calculate uh, what wind I need to to put in to um, to hopefully get a early impact on this this next target. 2073. I don't know why I had 2061 written down in my notes, but it says 2073, so I'm going with that. This was a uh, obviously a different. Um, a different format as last year, um, different targets, different distances, um, different uh, directions of fire. Everything's kind of switched up. We had some some familiar plates on this match, um, but uh, but most of them were were new distances. So there you see me pumping the airfoil bag, getting right on target. Three point one seconds flight time on this. So you make a little adjustment there for windage. So impact to that, impact to the next one. Oh, that's right. The, this is the one that went under. Yeah, the, the next target's where I made the two impacts. This is really difficult. It's a really difficult match. The wind kept shifting. If you notice the American flag in the background, it just kind of kept shifting back and forth. And that's just typical this time of year. And in Kansas, we never get any consistent wind. It's always it's always just a, you know, a beat down, <laughs> it seems like. There's been very few times where, um, where I've actually had no wind at Spear Point, so... That was a pretty that was a pretty tough round. Was, of course, that was the first time I've ever shot a match or a shot a round solo, so it was it was kind of strange just kind of getting the feel for it. I think I'll do a lot better in April, um, but uh, yeah, this was this is definitely challenging, and this is kind of what I'm doing trying to do this year is challenge myself, just put myself to um, 
to a whole new set of skills. Um, just kind of get back to my roots of um, not rushing. That's what I kind of felt like I did last season. If you go back and look at my old videos, I felt like I really, I, I kind of rushed myself. There was like the, the times where my scope camera was working, you would see times where I would actually try to open the bolt uh, before, like while the bullet was still in flight. And, and what, what I'm doing there is I'm offloading work to my spotter and I, I was getting lazy and that's not the way I shoot. So this right here is 2,203 yards. I'm at 16 and a half mils. And you can see up there in the top left of the screen, that's the hit indicator. Uh, they have uh, two rows of five lights and you can see since nobody calls impact, there's no bells, there's no bu buzzers or anything. And if you're not seeing those impacts, then the only the only indication that you are getting from the scoring tower that you see over there at the top right is those yellow, orange lights that, that come on. This shot here is an impact. And then the next shot's an impact. And that was literally the last two impacts of the match. The next target, I'm moving on to 3,079. Luckily, I saw everything. What's really disappointing in ELR when you shoot and you don't even see where they go. My data is pretty good now. Um, I've got the PDM lining up excellent, especially after, you know, you'll, you'll see later in the match here in the, on the farther plates. Um, my data is looking really good. So what I'm doing now is I'm pulling the Charlie Turak out. I'm, I put the scope back down to zero. This is a 40.3 is exactly what it works out to. I have a video um, that you'll find from last year where I uh, trued up the Charlie and actually went out and did a tall tracking test and shot it to find out exactly how many mils um, it is. Because it says 40 on it, but how many is it really? And I actually measured it out to 40.3. So the next uh, target, target four, is 3,079 yards, and that is 39.8 is what I need. So I'm actually putting the Charlie on and then um, holding under. I have to raise the bipod up, let the air out of the airfoil, bring the bipod up. Now I've only got six minutes to do this, this whole stage, including all the adjustments, doing everything by myself. And um, I've got pretty good time management. And once I once I kind of get in the groove, I start I start rocking the bolt. So I'm already on target. Just kind of figuring out what I need to hold under here. Of course, the wind. You can see the flag. It's kind of changed again. So you can kind of you know you can guesstimate what the wind's doing. You can go out and take your measurements and see the the flags and figure it all out and it doesn't mean a thing once you get the firing line you know i've seen like look at the flag it got dropped straight down it's not even moving right now and then you'll see it start whipping around again there it goes of course you know the wind might be blowing right here at the shooter but what the heck's the wind doing three thousand yards away and what's the wind doing a mile away 150 feet in the sky you know, that's that's what you're trying to figure out. And um, a lot of times it's just, you know, get your best guess, uh, send around, and, you know, you, you might get a first-round impact. And if you don't, you got to see that miss, measure that correction, make the correction, and get back on the plate. And I saw all of these, luckily. So... Um, I got good data at least. I took good notes and I know where it needs to be. So next month, um, I feel like I'll do a lot better. Yeah, here we go. This is watch this wind gust right here. It just comes out of nowhere. Watch the flag. It just shifts around, and then right then when I shoot, wham! I'm just kidding. and it totally threw me off. That gust was probably rolling across the field the whole time I was shooting. There's the there's the flag again. Now it's coming from the wind's coming from like one o'clock. It was all over the place. It was a lot of fun though, and it's just it's just a learning experience. I'm still learning. I've been doing this for like 
10 years. I think I built my first big gun 10 or 11 years ago, and I'm still learning stuff constantly. It's just uh, it's one of those sports where you don't ever stop learning. It's always something new to figure out. So, yeah, I made some adjustments and then ended up right back where I started, and that happens a lot of times. My extreme spread on this rifle um, in testing was about six, and uh, actually I had an ES of nine over nine shots, and now it opened up a little bit. It's about 20, so I think the barrel is starting to settle in a little. It's probably got around 200 rounds down it now, so I am going to do a little more load development before the next match. Might need a little more powder um, just to kind of get it back into the node, and uh, I'll get it. I'll get it back to where it was. It's it's working really well. It's extremely accurate. I'm really impressed with it. So just off the side on that last shot. So next stage. This time instead of just going straight to shooting, I just kind of showed me just kind of loading the ammo block. Right now I'm just kind of just relaxing, just kind of getting my heart rate down and just kind of getting in the mode to to try to figure out what the heck the wind's doing. <laughs> so I decided to run the lab radar on this stage because there's no rules against it now. Um, and of course me being by, by myself, there's no spotters behind me that are gonna, um, they're gonna be like, you need to move that thing, can't see nothing. So I'm like, you know, may as well get a little data um, just to, uh, to see where I'm at. And um, needed some extra mats to get the, to get the bipod that much higher. Um, so this first target is 3638. Um, I needed 66 mils, and this has eight seconds of flight time. So I'm at 40.3 on the Charlie, and then I've got another, basically uh, 26 in the scope. And the first, let's see, on this one I recall, the first shot, I didn't see it at all. Um, I don't remember what I had put in for windage. I didn't have it written down in my notes right here uh, for some reason. But um, I had I had too much left put into it. Or not enough, not enough right, I guess I should say. And the wind was, uh, was howling pretty good. You can see that little ribbon over there kind of under my armpit right now. Just over my right shoulder. Um, the wind is just ripping. I can't even really tell which way the wind's coming from. I think it's coming from like. I don't think so. It's kind of hard to tell. I don't remember. But um, the the it landed. So what I, I so I've got the Mill C Night Force Mill C reticle, and if you look at the Mill C reticle, down to the bottom right of the center of the of the crosshairs. There's a little uh, one tenth. It's like an upside down T that has the one tenth subtensions on it. And what I typically do when I shoot, the gun kind of recoils to the left a little bit. So I put the target right in the middle of that area right there, between the between the crosshair, the perfect bullseye crosshair, and that little T. And I kind of get um, that little picture. That's where I, I put my target. Well, this thing landed too far off to the left because you know where. Um, I didn't have, I guess I needed to put it further over, I don't, it's kind of hard to explain. It, the bullet landed so far left that I, I couldn't see it, I couldn't, I, I couldn't see anything at all. Now the next shot, I went the other direction. I put the target on the left side and, um, and, then, I, and then I actually, hang on, is that right, put it here. Maybe I did it backwards the second time I put it on the right side. And I could actually see to the left of the reticle, I saw some dust move. I'm like, what was that? And But it was low. It was kind of hard to get a gauge of how far off it was. I think it was, it was probably two mils low, and I would say it was probably five mils left. And we're talking about a little over two miles. This one here drops in a bit closer. Oh, what was that? 
Oh, there's where the dust was. So that was on the third shot. I was checking the wind flags going. I was checking the American flag. Just trying to see what the heck's the wind doing now. Just a constant battle with the wind. That's what this game is. We can have perfect guns and perfect ammo, but this gun this game literally comes down to who can figure out the wind. And it's uh it's challenging, especially like if it was sunny out, you have a lot better um well, let's say you don't, you don't have a better picture, but you have Mirage. You can watch Mirage, and you can kind of see if you have a right to left or left to right or a boil at the target. And that's kind of a – you're basically looking at a combined amount of, of wind between you and the target, and you can kind of see if the trend is left or the trend is right. And um, the, this overcast, the picture was perfect. It was perfectly clear. But I couldn't see any kind of mirage, and that so I, I didn't know it was, since we kind of had a headwind. It was kind of a fishtailing headwind. I couldn't tell if it was coming from 12:30 or 11:30 or what. So it was uh, it was pretty brutal, and it it literally can change in an instant. And it, next, you know, one minute you're two mils right, and the next thing you know, you're two mils left. I don't know what Steve's looking at there. A windage. Like, what's this idiot doing? <laughs> oh, no, he was looking at my round. They thought I had an, an extra round left, um, but there was actually an empty. I, I For some reason, I put an empty back in the ammo holder, and there was four pieces of brass on the on the ground that one at the very bottom there doesn't have a doesn't have a projectile in it so now this is where it's really really difficult so I'm transitioning to 4227 it's 88 mils I've only got 36 in the scope so I'm holding another 12 over and with that amount of elevation if you draw a straight line from the opening in the Charlie track to where the target is the what's in the what's in there about a foot of of barrel and muzzle break it's just right there in the in the bottom of the reticle so I'm holding 12 over and at about seven and down it's nothing but muzzle break I couldn't even see the target at all so what I end up doing is I get I find the target on the horizon and to the right of the target there is a like a cedar bush that's maybe five six mils to the right and I probably should have and I had to zoom out I was zoomed out to shit 12 power maybe <laughs> to uh, to be able to have that much holdover in the reticle um, so I'm basically measuring over from that cedar bush and trying to hold the gun level and my reticles in the clouds and um, then you kind of see me tilt the rifle up so I can actually see the target after I'd shot. Just to try to get an idea of uh, if I could see one of them, see a miss and see where it's going. But I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see anything. It was really challenging. Um, so yeah, I came up a mill there. Um, since I reverse calc the wind and those two targets were fairly close, um, I, in you know, as far as distance across the field and um, in angle, seconds, the degree of angle, I um, I put the same wind in, and unbeknownst to me, I was actually extremely close on these on these shots, and uh, Steve and and Jacqueline and Shane had actually seen them. <laughs> they were just like, or Jacqueline had. On, I think Shane was just running the timer. So I gave up. I was I was almost out of time, and I was just like, eh, there's no reason to even wasting these last two shots. And they were like, uh, are you sure you don't want to shoot again? And they were like, dude, you were so freaking close. And Steve and Glenn said I was like .4 under it, and Steve said like .3, and we're we're talking four to five feet that I'd missed that target by at uh, 2.4 miles, and I couldn't even see it, you know, shooting it blind. But it was still a lot of fun. And um, I'm excited for next month. I think uh, I think I'll do a lot better. I'm pretty excited. So, thanks for sticking with me, guys. Appreciate the support.
Later.